During the ravages of the Second World War, Nazis crawled all over the European continent, wreaking terror and pillaging and looting everything they could find. Nazis famously stole untold amounts of artwork and destroyed priceless architectural wonders. But one of their most infamous and terrible pursuits was amassing stolen treasure. Nazi gold is the stuff of folklore and fable. Scary stories of the boogeymen who stormed cities under the swastika flag and looted everything they could get their grubby hands on. When it comes to Nazi gold, it's tough to know what's real and what's fiction. Here are nine crazy stories about Nazi gold heists that just might be true. It's buried in Bavaria. There could be a fabulous hoard of pilfered Nazi gold hidden in the lush Bavarian woods, but nobody has the right to get it. In one of the most bizarre stories that we've ever heard, there is a credible suggestion that over $600,000 worth of stolen treasure is located in an obscure corner of the Bavarian woods. Why is it still in the ground and not in a museum somewhere? According to the story, it comes down to a simple land dispute. The person who stumbled upon a cryptic map to the hidden treasure had a spat with the landowner, resulting in a stalemate between the two. Treasure hunter Hans Gluick claims that the two can't agree on a fair split, so the tremendous trove of art, gold and precious stones remains tucked underneath the ground, until they can come to an arrangement. Amazingly, the German government still hasn't intervened to excavate the treasure themselves, which begs the question. Is this all just foolhardy fantasy on the part of the feuding pair? There is some historical proof that the treasure existed. Plenty of Nazi missions were carried out in the Bavarian hills, and this trove of goodies could have funded quite a few covert ops. Still, until these two sit down for counselling, we will never know what kind of gold might be up in them thar hills. Number 8. A faraway castle full of riches. The Kaziah's castle in the Owl Mountains of Poland is a secretive and fascinating place steeped in speculation and rumours. This off-the-beaten-path castle is hidden deep in the forest, was once used by Nazi forces as a command centre and home base for carrying out their ghoulish missions. Thanks to the contributions of Nazi prisoners from Poland and Hungary, Kaziah's castle now has an immense collection of subterranean chambers that were used for munition storages, secret meetings, and maybe even housed Nazi treasure. This construction fell under the umbrella of Project Risa, a gargantuan development project that was top secret during the war and remained an enigma afterward. What the hell were the Nazis building down there? After the war, Kaziah's castle was restored to its rightful owners, and no riches have ever been found. But scholars and treasure hunters say it's because we don't know where to look. The word is that in addition to spectacular stockpiles of Nazi gold and gleaming gemstones, there are also the earliest versions of atomic weapons lurking somewhere in the depths of Kaziah's castle. One thing is for certain, we might never unlock all the secrets of Project Risa. Merkur's Mine Treasure As the Second World War was dwindling down and the Nazis were rapidly running out of options, many of them hurried to stow away their gold and treasure anywhere they saw fit, including abandoned mines. Operation Safe Haven was in full swing, a program designed to return stolen treasure back to its rightful owner. And Nazis wanted to keep their grubby hands on the lifted loot. As the Allies closed in, the Nazis got desperate and dumped a boatload of treasure right into Merkur's mine, a salt mine in Germany. On April 6, 1945, Allied forces stumbled upon a massive trove of loot, including 7,000 packages of gold bullion, treasure, and more macabre artifacts. The Nazis had removed gold fillings from their victims and stored them away in the mine. Whether these fillings were going to be reused for dental care within the SS forces, or simply melted down and repurposed, we might never know. What is clear is that these caches of Nazi spoils certainly helped to justify a lot of war crimes charges that came down the pipeline 
right after the war. Clues found in sheets of music. Proving that truth is often far stranger than fiction is our number six pick, where a map to Nazi treasure was found in the notes of a long forgotten school. In 2015, Bavarian violin maker Cyril Whistler decoded clues found scribbled in the margins of Gottfried Federlein's Marsh Impromptu and stumbled across a dazzling store of diamonds and gold, nicknamed Tears of the Wolf. The map was created by Martin Bormann, Adolf Hitler's secretary, and was likely a backup plan just in case the original stashers of the treasure were killed or compromised. For years, the piece was scrutinized, and many treasure hunters came away heartbroken, their dreams of finding riches beyond compare dashed. The total value of the Tears of the Wolf treasure has been estimated at over $60 million, including 100 pure gold bars and a massive selection of perfect diamonds said to have belonged to Hitler himself. At least the tiny Bavarian town of Mittenwald can rest since the treasure has been unearthed and no more hopeful hunters will be coming to their quaint Bavarian village in search of lurid Nazi riches. If you thought that story sounded like it was ripped straight out of Indiana Jones, check out our number 5 pick. Number 5. Sunken Treasure A ton of Nazi gold is supposed to have drifted down to the bottom of the ocean, never to be seen again. But one of the most famous examples comes not from the Seven Seas, but from an Austrian lake. If the stories are to be believed, the sunken treasure of Lake Toplitz was purposefully dumped in a rash attempt to throw the British economy into a tailspin. According to rumour, the Nazis ditched almost $6 billion of gold straight into the nondescript lake. Is there any way that a whole bunch of loot could just be sitting at the bottom of a lake with nobody the wiser? As it turns out, there just might be something hidden in the murky reaches of Lake Toplitz. The lake and the area around it were used for Nazi war exercises, and millions of dollars of counterfeit money were recovered from the lake itself in 1959. Was Lake Toplitz the site of a fiendish last-ditch effort to disrupt the world? Unfortunately, the cold depths of Lake Toplitz are notoriously lethal to divers, and at least five have perished in her icy waters with over 300 feet of murky muck to pass through, plus obstacles like submerged logs, recovering the Lake Toplitz treasure is as dangerous as it is intriguing. Number 4. The Lost Amber Room Russia's most prized treasure A massive room forged of gold and studded with some of the most precious stones and amber on the planet was stolen by the Nazis on June the 22nd, 1941. Nobody knows what happened to the marvellous Amber Room after the Second World War, but this astonishing treasure would be worth right around $500 million today. The Amber Room was snatched during Operation Barbarossa, where Nazis flooded the Soviet Union and invaded Catherine Palace, home of the stately Amber Room. Although the Russians tried to hide the room, the Nazis discovered it and carted it back to Germany, where it was displayed in Kaliningrad until the end of the war. Was the Amber Room destroyed in the bombing ravages of the Second World War? Some scholars think that it almost certainly was, although others speculate that the Amber Room is still intact, hidden and waiting to be found. Known as the eighth wonder of the world, the Amber Room is a remarkable prize for anyone who can crack the code and give this golden amber festooned work of art back to humanity. The Vatican got their hands dirty. It's a well-known embarrassing and disturbing fact that the Vatican had a hand in helping Nazis escape after the Second World War. But they might have kept some Nazi gold for safekeeping as well. There's credible intel that the Vatican was involved with a Nazi puppet state in Croatia and held roughly 170 million francs for the evil regime during certain parts of the war. After the war, the Vatican supposedly sent the money to Argentina and distributed it among the disgraced Nazis who fled there. Although the Vatican denies the report, nobody can say for sure how much involvement 
if any, the most influential religious organization in the country had. To its credit, the Vatican has denounced much of their involvement with helping the Nazis escape after the Second World War, but still claims that its holy hands are clean when it comes to the dirty, ill-gotten riches of the Nazi regime. Nazi Gold Train Since virtually the end of the Second World War, there have been rumors about a massive train stuffed to the gills with rich stuff buried somewhere in the mountains of Poland. According to the stories, this train is jammed with priceless art, precious gemstones, and gold. It is supposed to be concealed somewhere in the Owl Mountains, a known hangout for Nazis, and the location of many other supposed buried treasure sites. How could a giant train just melt away into the mountains? Apparently, you have to dig to find it. The train itself is masked by piles of rocks, and waiting somewhere underneath the Polish city of Walbrzyk. As you can imagine, this Polish town has become ground zero for treasure hunters, hoping to stumble across the fabled train and get their hands on looted Nazi goodies. Nobody has yet happened upon the gold stuffed train, and although archaeologists have poo-pooed its existence, amateur treasure hunters say there's historical proof. Project Risa was a massive subterranean construction project that took place in the Owl Mountains and might have been orchestrated to hide Nazi pilfered art, gemstones and gold. Plus, Nazi stashes of riches have been found in mountainous regions in Europe. So why not a gold-filled train? It wouldn't be the strangest thing that was ever unearthed. Secret Nazi Alchemy if the Nazis couldn't get their grubby little fingers on someone else's gold and riches, they tried to do the next best thing. Make it materialize out of thin air. Although alchemy has mainly been dismissed in favor of its more scientifically sound counterpart, chemistry, Nazis were fascinated by the archaic techniques and wanted to use them to conjure up riches for their regime. It's no secret that Nazis were heavily into the occult, so their dabblings in alchemy really shouldn't come as much of a surprise to anyone who knows about the history of the Third Reich. Although they never probably succeeded in their attempts, Nazis definitely tried to turn sand into gold. Karl Malchus was an alchemist and Hitler devotee who attempted to dazzle the Führer by turning sand into gold at Dachau, a famous Nazi concentration camp. Although Malchus's efforts ultimately failed, the mere fact that he got Nazi leadership to play ball speaks volumes about their involvement with the occult and their belief in pseudoscience, as well as their greed. The Nazis never successfully turned sand into gold, but they certainly tried. It's also worth noting that Malchus didn't make it out of the Second World War unscathed. After his process failed, he was imprisoned in Dachau himself. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to What Lurks Below.